Hey guys, it's Channel Lego Moore here with another Lego Ninjago movie set review, and this is the big one. Set number is 70620. This is Ninjago City. It has 4,867 pieces, 16 minifigures, or 17 if you count the robot, and it retails for $300 here in the United States. So here is the box of the set. Very large sized box, as you can see. And. See, it's just that big. It's so hard to carry. And then we also do get uh, three instruction manuals with this set. So you can see we get three instruction manuals for the lower level, which is called the Old World. We have the Street for the second, and then the High Rise for the third level. So without further ado, let's take a look at the minifigures and I will be having the instruction booklet a little bit nearby because they do give they do give um, information about uh, the characters so I will let you guys know what they are and this is going to be a quite a long review so please bear this in mind this is um, this is my first of the module reviews because it's technically a module building but without further ado let's start off with our minifigures and we'll start off with Kai here and this is him in his civilian outfit. This figure is exclusive just to this set. He also has some arm print. There's the back print on his torso. His face is the same as before, but this is Kai in his civilian outfit. And, oops, he comes with a croissant, which is pretty hard to put on at times. But it's still a great figure. So this figure is going to be very hard to get because he's only found in this set. Then we have our Ninjago fan named Tommy. He is... A big fan of the Green Ninja, and you can see his torso states Nemanja, Nemanja on there, and that lettering, which you can see the old Green Ninja in his design. I think this is his um, final battle design for the Ninja, and then there's the back print, and I believe, yeah, he has an alternate face on the back too. So there is Tommy, very cool figure, and according to one of the designers, he's based off his child. Next up, we have the Crab Chef. This is server in black very cool design his legs are the same as kebab bob from the lego movie and jesper from the temple of air jitsu he has a cooked crab in his hand and that torso looks really cool there's the back print the next figure we have is guy that's his name he has this hot pink sweater design on him and you can see the back print he is basically like um a guy who doesn't like the old world one bit so the very cool design on him and then we have the fisherman here. This is Conrad. Very cool figure. And he has a spear and also a holder for his hat. There's his back print. You can see there's also a little bit of a collar on the back, which I don't really, whoops, dropped his hat. I feel like grabbing, but you can see he does have that nice blue on there as well for the fish. And then we have Lloyd in his civilian outfit. This also appears in the Ninjago City Chase set. There's the alternate face on him and his back print on the torso which you also do get however his green ninja suit which is does not have the head in there obviously and you can see it does have some arm print on there as well so there's really no removing the mask or anything but you can see there then we have our actual ninja in the set we have Jay in his ninja garb and of course he does have spark written on his outfit and you can see the face underneath there and then there's the alternate face on Jay then we have our next figure this is Juno she is I believe a big fashion designer and you can see she does have a torso there's really nothing exclusive about her she has that nice black hair and then there's the alternate face on her then we have another uh, character from the TV series. This is Mother Doomsday, and he's the comic book shop owner. And I think a lot of people are going to like his torso because it references Galador on there, which is really funny. There's the background torso because we all know all about Galador's history. Then we have our next figure up. Oops, and they dropped his frog. This is the um, Jamana, Jamana, sorry, the Jamana Cry Villager, I believe that's what it's called. Um, I think it's the Jaminakai Jim, Jim, Villager. That's what it is. Sorry about that, guys. I stuttered right there. 
Um, he's an aged man who has a thing with frogs. Like, basically, he sells them for trinkets. There's the bit, a little bit of the back print on him. You can just see. I'll remove his back print just to show you. And there is his torso on the back. And he didn't need to have it because of the um, amount of stuff he has on. So there is the villager. And he does have the frog on him as well, which does fall out kind of easily. And then we have Sally here. And she does have the nice frog on her as well, with her as well. So there's Sally, a nice little design. And then we have our next figure up. We have Ivy Walker. And she has her diamond, which is her most valuable possession. And she meant they mentioned that she is a mother. So you can see her printing there, which looks really cool with the birds on there. And then there's the back and alternate face. So her last name is Walker. Could she be Jay's biological mother? Who knows? Because we know Edna and Edna are uh, Jay's adoptive parents. And then we have our officer here. This is Officer Noonan. And you can see she has that black police hat, solid black, which is really cool. And she also has the same print as Officer Toke, which is the bad cop torso. Then we have Miss Sako, Lloyd's mother, in her normal casual outfit. You can get her cheaper in the um, collectible minifigures, but you can see she does have that nice hair piece. And then there's her face there, and then the alternate face where she is winking. Then we have our maintenance robot. This is Sweep. Very cool design. You can see he does have the newer style hat. He uses the um, the power glove part from, uh, what was it, uh, Ultra Agents, and he reuses the Nexo Knights Squire Bot Spotty, which is pretty cool that they reuse that. And our last figure we have is our Shark Army Gunner. He has a fish in his hand, which has the crystallized flame coming out, which is which was used constantly with Elsa for the Disney Princess line. So you can see there as well. So there's our Shark Army Gunner. Now, let's get on with our builds of the set, because there's a lot to talk about. So first off, we have Conrad's little boat here, and you can see there's a printed tile which first appeared in the Destiny Shadow set from the Hands of Time, which is supposed to be like a solar panel, and then there's a little fan on the boat, which is printed. So it's a nice little fishing boat, um, like the design of it, and it feels very cozy as well. Now let's get on with Ninjago City. So you can see right off the bat, this thing looks beautiful. Like seriously, this thing, look at the size of my hand compared to this thing. This is a crazy set. So I'm actually going to go start off with the old world first and then we'll go with the streets and then we go with the high rise up on top. So we're going to start off with the old world. So there's a lot to go through this set. And then of course, let me just show you from the back very quickly before I get to deconstructing it a bit and you can see there is the back of it so without further ado let's get deconstructing right away so I'm gonna remove some parts of the building so I can easily show you and easily access certain areas so without further ado let's begin all the way down to the village so without further ado down to the old world village we go right here we go all right, take this off here, and we are a go. Let's begin. So here is the bottom level, and you can just see right off the bat, we have this nice um, brick-built like raft platform, which I like. There's some frogs going around. I love the water bill with all these trans-blue tiles, which I think is really, really cool. And then you also have an elevator which goes up, so you can bring that up. We'll bring that up when we go up to the next floor. And there's a little printed tile which controls it. You have a little platform here too. You also have here in the back, you have a little shack right here which has some pretty interesting builds. And inside is basically the home for sweeps basically. And then moving up, you also have a little sticker right there. That displays like sweeps charging station. And then you have a little fish market there, which has a crab and some fish there. And you also have 19 crowbars. And they make up this nice roof uh, design, which I think looks really, really well done. You can also see we have a stone bridge on the other side here. And it has two lily pads made of the artist 
uh, Poway piece, which I think is really clever. And then you also have the bridge here, which also has a sticker on each side showing the words Diddy or City. I think it's supposed to be City, but from what I've read, it had the D for the Ninjago lettering. So over here, we also have a printed arrow going up, pointing to this sticker, which is says Sushi right on there. And then we also have a little banner, which also has a sticker. And it actually says in the Ninjago language, play well, which I think is really awesome because that's what Lego translates in Danish is to play well. And I think that's so clever that Lego did that. Then we have another sticker right here displaying an S. We have another one of the same stickers. You, you just see the vines going around. We also have one that says, I believe, GS right here, which is pretty interesting. Another sticker that says, Visit Bricksburg. That's a reference to the Lego movie. You can also see the nice column piece here with the silver crab. And also just the design of it looks fantastic with that, the slopes as well. This says map here, which is pretty interesting. We also have a telephone right here, which has a sticker on there. It says 4-5 on it. And then there's the chip part, which is printed. And you can see there's even a train wheel bracket there as well. We have a pit poster here of a geisha. And it is a sticker that says... Uh, C H I C on it, which says chick, which of course you can't read all of it because some of it's partly blocked off. You can also see we have some sewage coming out of this hole right here, which is really clever. I think that's super awesome. And then you also have a little banner right here that says um, high tech on it in Ninjago language, which is also a sticker. So there's a little bridge right here. So let's get on with um, the bottom of one of the houses. And we'll start off with this part right here. So you can see we have a little bit of a vine coming out of it. We also have some ingot pieces, which you can also see around as like broken stone. We have a nice moon-shaped window there and some rice paper doors I can open. You have a little design that has a sticker. There's like a bed or like a floor mat on there with a nice dresser piece. And inside you can see there's a TV that says, Good Day Ninjago on it, which is pretty awesome. So you can easily uh, put it right on top of here. So we'll go on to the next area, which is this nice little tea house, which I put the model in its place. Come on, baby. It's a little tough to get. There we go. So it's a little tricky to get on there. But then let's get to the tea house build. So you can see here's the tea house. So you can open and close that. There's a sticker in there that has a tiger on there. And, I, and it, from what I've read, it says, and it's really hard for me to read. So if I get this wrong, please let me know. It says on it DJ or DJE. I think that's what it says. I, I could be wrong. Uh, but that's a nice little banner. You have some tea there as well. A little welcome mat. And you also have a nice bonsai tree, which uses Sabine Wren's hairpiece from Star Wars Rebels in green. And I think that's super clever. You also have the newer fence piece from Ninjago movie sets as well, which also appear a lot in this set. And you have the, the circular window and some lanterns around. So there is the old world. So very cool, awesome design. So just again, just the detailing on there and the bridges just look really awesome. So let's get on to the streets. And this is where a lot of the awesome stuff happens. So moving right along. So keep in mind, guys, like I said, this is my first modular building review because I really don't review the modules because they're just a little tough to do. And now we've reached the streets. So over here, we'll start off once you hit the elevator, we'll turn to the back just to show you. There's a little pipe right there uh, popping out, and there's like a little plant coming out, which is something that's going to show up a little later. And we have some functions here in the back, which is for the restaurant, and there's another function for the ATM. So we'll go up just to show you with the elevator. Then over here, we have a little sticker there that says uh, crab on there. It says AB on there. Over here... We have a poster that says Shadow of Rowan Ninjago, and that poster is a reference to the video game Shadow of Rowan, which was an actual Lego Ninjago video game. We also have a little sticker here that says Film on there, so you open this door up, and when you push it down, you also have other movie posters, which they are stickers. You have Return of the Brick Separator, which is a reference to the Palace Cinema set. We have Tired of Walking, which is Cars, it says. And even a poster for Galador. That's just funny that Lego is referencing Galador in this set a lot. So first with the Mother Doomsday minifigure and then with the movie posters. So then moving around, 
We do have also the Crab Shack here, which has a nice brick belt crab on there. We have some pearl gold um, wiring, or sorry, flooring going around, and some lanterns going around. And inside, we also do have a little bit of the cooking restaurant there. And you can see in the bottom, we have tools to cook crabs as well. I'll show you that function in a bit. So what you can do is you have a gold frying pan, which I believe is exclusive to this set in that color. You have a hammer, force hammer, and a buzz saw, and then there's a banana in gold. Yes, oh, banana, and then a yellow one. So here's one of the coolest things is to cook a crab. So you open this up, and that little turntable you saw on the back, to cook the crab, you close this down, you turn this, and voila, you got your cooked crab. That is just such a little great function. Even the designers really like it, so you can just easily, you got to close it also first if you guys want it. Because if you have it open when you're cooking it, it's not going to work well. So let's move on to, before we get to the comic book store, we have some signs here. We have a, a boomerang designed um, sign which uses the boomerang pieces. We also have a sign here that says Comics, Dragon Power, JB Robotics, All City. A nice nod to Lego Island Extreme Stunts. That's such a great little function. You also have some nice front building here which has the jet packs from Star Wars. I think that's so clever. You can also open the door to the shack. We have an old Ninjago reference right here which is says Borg Industries on there. Rocket Racer, Lego Ro Racers reference there. We also have Trilobite there and then we have a surfboard on there. And you can also see one of the coolest things I like about this is they have the air conditioners built out there on each side of the restaurant. And even like these lava designs, which I think you just stuff these round tiles in there for the uh, design. Then we have the bank here, the ATM, which has two stickers. This is printed. And in the back, if you want to get money, you could just push it out just like so. And it works super well. So you could just take this down if you want and then just push it out. And it works really well. So if you guys want to refill the ATM, you can just do so by removing this. And then you can put the money back in. So again, you can just see a little bit a better look at the ATM. Just such a great little technique. And it's even like very easy to refill. So I think that's so cool. So then we have part of the comic book shop right here. We have a sticker that says sale on there. So we'll open this up, go inside, and you can see we have figurines, action figures of the ninja. We have Kai, Lloyd, Zane, Jay, Nia, and Cole, which is pretty neat. You also have a comics right here, which are the Starfare comics, which first appeared with the Jay minifigure in the Lego Ninjago uh, character encyclopedia update and expanded. One of my favorite things about this set is the trading card design over here. So if you look very closely, we'll take this up a bit. You can see we have some training cards, one referencing Johnny Thunder from LEGO Adventures, Lloyd from Ninjago, the older days. Don't know what this one is, so if you guys know these two, let me guys know in the comments. We have one for Fabuland with a walrus on it. We have a Lion Tribe member from Legends of Chima. We have a miner from either Rock Raiders or Power Miners, and even one with Unikitty from the LEGO movie, which I think is really cool. So that's pretty much part of the street level. There's also another part of the comic book shop which has the words comic on there and you can see the print on the eye there which looks really awesome i like how it's built up they use the white tiger headpiece um you also have some speakers there which are printed these are the same ones that appeared in the joker's notorious lowrider from the batman movie you have some trinkets up there and one of my favorites has to be this sticker right here that has believe on it that's actually the same cat poster that appeared in the lego movie such a clever real reference there then we move on to our next part up of the build, and that is more of the street level. And going up, we have a nice, more nice building techniques here. So moving around, we also have a little bit of a nice little window here. There's really nothing in there, but it's just a nice design. And of course, Lloyd and the others can go up if they want, so you can see here. We also have a nice little like fashion shop here and you can see over here we have some skate we have a skateboard we have some smartphones there which are printed we have a little sticker right there that is a reference to space I believe which I think is really cool I think that's really awesome 
Um, we also have some scarfs there. We have that newer scarf mold on one of the mannequins, which we used the Woo Crew uh, symbol outfit on there. We have these nice exhaust pipes for the decoration. We have some guitars there. And then we also have some uh, straw hats in orange, which you can remove. We have a top hat, which is the same one from the uh, penguin in the classic bat cave. We have a race car helmet. We have a the yellow helmet for Axel Squirebot from Nexo Knights. We also have a bowler hat and a pith helmet on there as well. Moving along, we also have a little bit of a construction site, which also has a sticker on the back that says danger in the Ninjago language. And the construction site has been overtaken by this cherry blossom tree, which I think is a really awesome build. I really love the design on that. It's so, so awesome. I love that a lot. It's such a great little set on it, a great little detail on there. And if you look very closely, it also reuses one of the... Uh, buildable elements from the Star Wars figures, which I think is really cool. The buildable construction figures of Star Wars. So let's move on with, uh, with what is it? Misako and Lloyd's apartment. So it's this little cramped apartment, which you can easily open up. And inside we have, we can remove this. And you can see there's a little sticker right there that says, that has Wu, uh, Misako, and Garmadon on there, which I think is really cool. So there's a little better picture look of it. You have... This cramped um, shelves up on top, which is really neat. You also have a microwave. There's also Good Day Ninjago again. And then, of course, there's a table with a chair. So it's a really cramped but effective apartment. And then you also have Lloyd's bed up on top, which you can easily remove. And then you can see there's another sticker right there. So, again, just moving along with the sticker up on top. We then move on to the roof of Lloyd's place. You can see... Nice design here. I love the clever techniques they use for it. And there's also some space to store his ninja suit in there. So I think that's really awesome. You can just store that right on the top there. So there is the next part. So there is Lloyd's. And there's a satellite dish right on top of there as well. And just some air conditioning this nice window. Just a lot to go through. Now let's take a look at the uh, top of the place. So we'll take a look here. And moving along, you can see the very top. We'll put this up on top. And this is the pretty much the upper sushi deck area. So over here, you can see we have a bit of a puffer fish build, which I think is really cool. This was actually a tricky build, and it's very a complex build, honestly. You can also see we have a little squid build here, which uses the two catapults there, which I think is really awesome. You also have a sticker that says rice and shine on there it's so clever you have a little menu there and of course you can also bring the elevator very much up into the high rise area if you want we have a little antenna here which has this sticker over here which i think is a bionicle reference i don't know if it is or not then you also have the roofing here with some stickers that have sushi on there and then you have the car door pieces they actually make car door pieces as part of the roof which i think is super well awesome um, you also have a little bit of a chef hat, which according and a mustache, which according to the designers, you can make server server in black a um, wear that as like a disguise for the sushi chef, which is really neat. Then you also have over here the uh, menu. There, there's some table and seating, and then there's a sushi go round place. There's even a, a little chopping station for the. Uh, fish there and there's a butcher knife and then there's the sushi go round uh, design which looks really awesome I love that a lot you can just make it as a conveyor belt would have been cool to use the prints for the sushi but it's understandable given the fact that you can't really um, what was it you can't really um, put those uh, tiles on here because it has to be like upwards and the design just works well and you just turn that there's a little ladder going up which we go on to this sand green tower which goes on top so we can show you right here what it looks like and inside you can open this up and there's a little bathroom in there which has a Japanese squatting toilet we have a pink cup for like toilet paper there's like cherries for like a car freshener or like a freshener and then you also have a, a sink right there and just the sand green coloring looks cool and then you also get the newer style piece of those uh, walls to go on top and then finally going up on top, we then have our 
like our radio tower, which has this nice hole going through it. Really love the design on that. And you can just see the sand green again on there as well. And just a nice uh, Hands of Time boys, which were first used on Lord of the Rings, obviously. But still the nice round tiles and all that, you know, just go well together up. So here it is, guys. One last look of Ninjago City. So you can just see the detailing again, just everything else again. And yeah, that is pretty much it for my thoughts on Ninjago City. So that's my, th now let's get with my final thoughts on this set. So $300, um, I didn't exactly pay $300 because I used my VIP points from before with this set. But to be honest though, $300 for what you get with this set. The third largest Lego set ever made in the history of Lego. This set is so worth your money because for almost 5,000 pieces, 4,800 and I think nearly 4,900 pieces for... $300, I think, is such a great deal with this set. There is a lot to do with this set. There are some good play functions. And just for collectors, they're going to love this set a lot. I think, personally, the design of it is just super awesome. And it does connect with the other Madra bones. If I didn't show you guys the pins, it does have the pins on there. But from what I have saw before, it doesn't really fit well into that matter. But it just is a great set. I just love the absolute details. The amount of pieces they use, the clever techniques they have with it is just so well done. And I'm just really impressed with this set. And hands down, guys, this is one of my personal favorite sets of the Lego Ninjago movie line. If not my favorite, I mean, the Destiny's Bounty is a close second for sure. But for $300, for what you're getting with this set, I think personally, it's just a great design, honestly. And it's, you know, for Madra Bone fans, they're going to love this set people who aren't ninjago fans they're gonna love this set they're gonna love everyone's gonna love this set there's something for everyone in this set and for 300 dollars for many pieces it's a great deal just a great great deal overall and it's just something that has to be part of your collection it is that awesome and the de design and techniques they have just really make this set stand out super well so i give it two thumbs up Highly recommend it. Worth your money. It's it's just I, I I just can't recommend this set enough. It's it's just so awesome. It, it's just really an awesome. So great job to the designers, and I think this is going to be a very popular set regardless. It's just a beautiful, beautiful set. So let me guys know what you think about this set down below in the comments and subscribe. Let me guys know what you think if this is one of the best sets ever made. Thanks for watching, guys.